that was the best part for me is that, yeah, you have these feelings and you feel discouraged, but it's what you do with them. Do you let them dwell and overcome you and you lose sleep on it? Or you say, you know what, screw those. I'm going to go and do my thing and win It's because my fate is determined by me. Welcome to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast, where we take you behind the scenes of wholesaling and house flipping businesses. The systems and automation that we discuss will help you build a real business instead of another job for yourself. From beginners to those doing hundreds of thousands a year, we go deep into the details and strategies that are working today. And now your host, Bill Allen. Hey everybody, welcome to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. This is Bill Allen and today I've got a repeat guest on and somebody who shared with us how to flip a house in seven days. It was amazing. But today we're going to be talking about something different. We're going to be talking about success habits. So as you guys know, we rolled out this account, these accountability groups in the mastermind inside the Seven Figure Runway and the Seven Figure Altitude right after Flip Hacking Live. And we're coming up towards the end of our first 12-week year session. So we've been putting in the time, holding, we have like 140 some people that are in the accountability groups. It's incredible. I think there's 18 groups and we have a bunch of different leaders. So people have stepped up and volunteered to be leaders. And Mr. Tyler Jensen is back with me today on the podcast to talk about some of the habits that have led to his success. I'll share some of my success habits. And then some of the things that we've seen in other entrepreneurs and other people in the flipping and wholesaling business that showed certain aspects of what they did to make them successful. Because what we want to do is we're doing this series on success habits. We just did the productivity uh, podcast where we talked about, you know, getting a planner, being productive, looking at your day, not just spinning your wheels for nothing, but having an action. And I'm using the planner right now. We, we talked about the Boldly & Co. planner. I'm using it right now. Today is my first day. We're doing this on Monday. And I sat down, I lined out my whole day. What it showed me is that I had meetings all day. I had podcast recordings. I had phone calls, video calls, L10 meeting, everything. I could not do anything else other than that. And so I didn't schedule it into my day. In the beginning of the day, when I wake up on, Sun, on Monday morning, I usually go, okay, I've got gaps here, here, and here. I can stuff some things in here. But I didn't put anything else other than the meetings in today. And it's been so much easier for me today. I actually ate lunch although I was at my desk, but I actually ate it today, which usually at this point in time in the afternoon, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to eat lunch. So that is, these are definitely going to help you. They're helping me. And I thought my habits were really good. And there's some really negative habits that I need to break. So Tyler, number one, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with me. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate totally. you being okay with me running a little bit late today because my last interview went a little bit over. It's, so. it's all right. On this last appointment, I totally missed our meeting. So you're half an hour late and I missed it. So yeah, you, <laughs> you did completely stand me up, which is why I didn't mind uh, being a half hour late. So totally. Um, oh, okay. So another thing that I want to tr start doing on the, on the podcast potentially is share our kind of seven figure flipping story as we come on. So the, in sure. the beginning, and, and I want to, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I'll kind of do mine. And a lot of people that are listening may not know who I am. This may be the first time they're listening to the podcast. Those of the, you that do listen to the podcast might not know my background or where I came from and think that I, you know, for the last 20 years that I've been flipping and wholesaling houses at a really high level. But I'll do mine real quick. I'll give you kind of an example and then we'll learn a little bit more about you. Does that work? Perfect. Okay. So, uh, I basically, my seven figure flipping story is I was, I was a military pilot. So I was flying for the Navy full time active duty. I, I did that for 15 years and, um, I was flying airplanes and helicopters. I moved every two years. I never stayed in the same place for longer than that. And I was always into the real, I was always into finances. I always liked money and trying to become financially free. In my mind, I wanted to retire young, and, but I was single for a long time. I was, uh, didn't meet, even meet my wife until about seven years ago. So I was a single guy going through the military, moving around all the time, and I was saving money, but I was pretty much spending a lot of money and I was investing in the stock market primarily. Then I found real estate and I was getting a little bit excited about that. I thought that might be a vehicle that I could play with to get to financial independence faster. And then I met my wife when I was in England. And at that time, that's when things changed for me. I stopped being so selfish and I realized that I had to start figuring out my family situation and being becoming financially free for my family and being able to do... And now I, was, I had two people off one income. So I really had to figure things out. And so then we had our first son, Will, and uh, that accelerated things even faster. So I started getting into real estate even heavier. I flipped a house 
one year. Then the next year I tried to flip another house and I was still flying full time. Now I had a baby and a wife. I was flipping houses and trying to do more than one a year. And I just couldn't figure out how to do it. I felt like now I had a second full-time job. I was doing this because of my family, but I wasn't spending any time with my family because I was working before work. I was working after work. I was out there on the weekends. I was going to Home Depot. I was doing all the things. I was working on this business that was supposed to make me financially free, but it was basically just doubling the amount of time that I was spending in my life away from my family, not helping me get closer to them. And when I got the $40,000 at the end of the year, I worked way more than that of what I deserved to get out of that. I was basically working for $10 an hour. So that's when I heard this guy on this podcast. He was, this podcast, the seven figure flipping podcast, he's doing 100 to 150 houses a year. He was bored. He was hanging out with his family, surfing, doing all this stuff. And I said, well, I need to figure out what that's all about. Listened, really started enjoying what I was hearing started getting some ideas, getting excited. And he rolled out this mastermind group, so seven figure flipping. I was the, one of the first people to jump in, raise my hand, say I'm in, pay the money, join this mastermind group. And that's kind of the turning point that changed everything for me. I started seeing other people who were doing it. I started seeing the blueprint. I started seeing that it's possible. I started understanding and believing that it was possible. That was the biggest thing for me, actually believing it, believing that it's possible. And next thing I know, that first year, I went from doing one house the year before to doing 67 houses the first year. And then the second year, we did like 135, and then it was 187, and we did probably 165 to 170 this year, and this past year in 2019, and grew a business from doing $40,000 a year to now we did just under $3 million this past year in, in gross profit. So, and the best part is now I'm able to work two hours a week in that business and run this seven figure flipping company full time. And I went from a paying member to another paying member to a mentor to a COO and then being able to buy the company. And what that's done for me is just changed everything. It changed the way I think, changed the kind of person that I am, changed the impact that I make on the community. But the biggest thing for me is the transformation in myself and my, the way that I, my life, like who I am and what I, what I think about and how I carry myself and all the decisions that I make are different. I look at the whole world differently than I did four years ago. And I think that's kind of the, the antithesis of my seven figure flipping story is that it changed not only my, my income and my bank account, which I thought was what it was all about in the beginning, but it's not. What it's about is the impact that I can make, the things that we can do for charity, the people that listen to the podcast, the events that we put on, the lives we change. That's what it's about for me and being able to choose what I want to do when I want to do it. And nobody else can tell me where I need to be or what I need to do or the uniform that I need to wear or the deployment that I have to go on or the holidays that I'm going to miss because I'm not with my family. Um, I decide when my kids get sick and my son has his heart surgeries and all these things happen, I'm there and I'm dad and I can coach and I can, I can coach my kids and I can coach my staff and I can coach my team and I can coach all of you. And that's what my favorite part is. So that's my story. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a preview, uh, Tyler, <laughs> of, um, of what I think this, this, like when we have our members on, um, everybody's got a different story. And a lot of people have been with us for two years, three years, four years, and some are just their first year. And everybody's got a little bit different story and a little bit different feel about what this is for them. And I think there's a lot of listeners out there that they would resonate with my story and some won't. Some don't understand that. They don't have a family or they don't have, um, and, you know, have never had to deploy on a holiday or something like that. So uh, it's interesting because everybody has a little bit different story and a little bit different journey. And how they found this or what they wanted or what they were looking to get out of it and what they actually did get. So that's why I'm interested in hearing all this from you guys. So I think it'd be cool in the beginning of these going forward for our members is to really start hearing their seven figure flipping story. So it'll resonate with some people and uh, hopefully somebody takes some, something from it says, wow, like this is possible. It's some motivation. It's some, it's that push that they need to get past the next hurdle or the next jump. And it doesn't necessarily have to be them jumping into our mastermind group or anything. It's just, there's, it's possible. Like we, I can do it. And we do that at Flip Hacking Live so well, but there's only so many people that attend that event. And there's lots more people that listen to this podcast. So I think we can motivate people with each of these stories to show them that it's possible and what the path that they're going down is right. And maybe they just need this podcast. Maybe they need to go to sevenfigureflipping.com and check out some of the resources there. Maybe they need to come to Flip Hacking Live. Maybe they need to jump into the mastermind group. They're in all different areas. So, um, 
All right, let's try it. Let's oh, see what I you should have gone first, man. That's hard to follow. Oh well, yeah, but I, no, listen, <laughs> I know yours. I know yours. I've heard it before and it's amazing. So um, I think, uh, yeah, so I, there's your example to yeah, uh, oh, do whatever you Thanks. want. Way so. to set the bar high. I don't know if I can <laughs> do more than that. But no, let me just tell you my, my quick story. Um, I After high school, I went and I was doing all my pre-med stuff. So I was going to be, I wanted to be a pediatrician. I was going to school to be a paramedic, all of that. And then I left for two years, our church, we send out our young men for a couple of years to do a missionary work in a different country or different place or whatever. And I was out there and I got to spend a lot of time with the guy who was in charge of the missionaries. And um, that guy, I was telling him, yeah, I want to go to medical school and I want to be a doctor. And he's like, well, why, why would you want to do that? You're, you'll make good money, but your life will suck, right? Your quality of life will be terrible. So he was like, why don't you go into business? And we taught, we had these, a lot of these conversations about going into business and, and why that, that is a better life path. So anyways, he kind of changed my mind. I, I was all set up to go to medical school and then I, I came back and I got into college. I kind of took that corporate route, right? You need to go to college and get a good education, whether it's in medical or business, whatever. I found some mentors here and um, I said, hey, teach me what I need to know, how I can be successful in business. So I started getting mentors in college. I started, I flipped my first house in college. I was a freshman in college and I said, hey, I think I could really flip this house. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I watched, uh, I did a ton of stuff. I would lay tile my spring break. I still remember my friends were all out partying on spring break and I was laying tile or flooring in the bathroom. So I did a ton of work and then I realized I'm like, man, I would do one or two houses a year and I just kind of did that to help pay for college. Essentially I worked and then I'd go work more flipping houses at night. I was working a ton and I realized that there was potential in flipping houses and it's something I always wanted to do. But then I got my degree. I kind of took the corporate route. I was a COO for a company for a while. I'm a business manager. I did logistics. I was in manufacturing was my background. I was still flipping houses part time, but I, I felt this, that I needed to go the corporate America path. I was going to be a CEO and all of that. And then I realized that I hated corporate America. I hated only getting two weeks of vacation off every year. And I hated that I would get a 3% uh, increase on my wages every year or cost of living. And I just hated that feeling. Right. And so I was the same way. I listened to the podcast. I talked, I listened to Justin Williams and Andy McFarland is in my market. Right. So I've seen, I've seen it. I've heard his name. I heard it, you know, I've seen him at a couple of Rias, stuff like that. And so I called him and I took him to lunch. And if you don't know, Andy's favorite place is Chipotle. So I can't tell you the number of times Andy and I met at Chipotle and talked about real estate. But I said, Hey, I know that you're part of this group, this Justin Williams guy. It seems like a good guy. Tell me about the group. What is it? So we talked and then I, I joined, I think, Bill, you did my onboarding call, right? I had dabbled in real estate. I partnered with a contractor. Um, we did like four or five houses that year before I joined seven figures. So that was two years ago, almost, uh, it'll be February, like second is when I joined seven figure flipping. So I was still employed. I was a business manager. I was doing accounting for like charter schools in our local area. So I started February. I had a full-time job. I had two, uh, three kids right as I was joining that. Um, we just had our, our, baby was born February 1st. So I literally joined like a week. I had a baby here. I joined and then a week later I had a baby, something like that. So it was time. I was like, man, I'm sick of doing accounting. I hated this whole thing. And so I really wanted to take that path and to go into real estate. So I, I started in February and I said, okay, by the end of the year, I'm going to quit my job. And by September, I was doing more real estate than I was doing accounting because I hated accounting. I hated getting up. So I would spend my time at work trying to do deals and talking with contractors. And it just came to this point that they were either going to fire me or I was going to quit because I knew what my true passion was and it wasn't accounting. It was real estate. So I did that. I quit my job in September, September 1st, uh, that same year I quit my job and here we are almost 18 months later or whatever. And it's been the best thing ever. And it was terrifying and it was scary. And we closed on two houses the week before I quit my job. Two houses we closed on, my wife and I, and we said, hey, this is awesome. Seven figure has, has changed our lives. We closed on these two deals. And I told her, I'm like, I'm going to quit my job. We have enough money that I could live for six months. And if it doesn't work, I'll go back and get another job. And she said, no way, right? <laughs> like I, I told this story at Flip Hacking Live, but 
she says, no, I don't want you to do this. And I knew that it was my passion and my calling. And then I just started growing it. And now I, I'm meeting with my team tomorrow. So we're doing our year planning meeting tomorrow. And I have 30 people who are touching my business now, right? Between our, our agents and between um, my crew and my contractors, my project manager, my office staff. It's just amazing, that experience. And I, I just listened to this Tony Robbins uh, book. He said, you know, that power of proximity, who you surround yourself with is who you become. And I knew that I thought I was a big deal in my market. I was doing six flips or whatever. I thought that was pretty impressive. And then you get in a room with Bill Allen and with Andy McFarland and with Don Costa at the time, right? And Becca Shea and Terry Berger and all these guys are doing just massive volume. And not only were they really good at what they were doing, they were good people. And that's who I needed to be around. That proximity was power. Now they're my best friends. Like, honestly, the, the five people that you hang out with, all five of those people are in this group. And it's because of that, that attraction factor. But it's changed my life. It's been life changing. And um, looking back, Bill, your challenge was in 2019 to look back at what you accomplished, right? And I did that. I did that exercise. I filled out the goal worksheet and everything. And the number one thing that was amazing to me was that I took off every Friday for a year to hang out with my kids. I didn't work. We call it fun, fun Fridays at my, in my house. My kids get off early on Fridays and we'd always do something fun, whether it's go to the skate park and skate or we'd go to the, the park and play or whatever it was. There's no way I could have been able to do that without this group. So those fun Fridays have been more meaningful to me than a million dollars ever would be. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, it's funny because that's, that's the thing that, I think you, your thing was you want to spend time, more time with your family, right? I mean, oh, you work, 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 work. Me too. Very similar. And the, the other thing that I take from you now is you, ca you came up to me at Flip Packing Live and just said, hey, I, I, want to, I want to do more. I want to help more. I want to make yeah. impact. And some of the things that you're doing, I know we don't have time to dig deep into all of this stuff, but um, you, you went somewhere else to build houses for somebody. You just d rehabbed a house and gave it to somebody for Christmas. Just talk a quick, give me a quick overview about some of that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's my whole objective, man, is that, that it's not what, how much money you have, it's how much you give, right? And so for me, we, I went to the Dominican Republic for two weeks and we built three houses and we donated, my company donated those houses to the people in the Dominican. And then we came back and I got my whole team involved on a rehab project. We just donated the full rehab. I talked to all my guys. They said, hey, we're in. We'll donate our time. Um, Home Depot and some other people said, hey, we want to help. We want to donate to the cause. My company put in some money and we donated this rehab to the single mom. She has three kids and runs a daycare out of her house. And she, I don't know how she ever had a daycare out of her house. There was mold in the shower and just a whole bunch of stuff like that. But amazing, amazing experience. That to me was worth far more than reaching my goals of hitting a million dollars and all of that. We made a difference in people's lives. And that's one of my really core values is, is that people connection. How are we helping and giving back to people? And same thing with this group. I'm in a position now that I, I'm doing coaching calls and stuff like that, where I took from this group for so long. And now I have finally the opportunity to give back and to mentor people who are still coming up and I can get them to my level, but I'm still, I still reach up to Bill Allen and say, Hey, I need to help to get to your level. Right. And that's just, it's amazing that pay it forward mentality. Yeah. And I know exactly how that feels because a couple of years ago I was in that same place to, you know, want to give back and I was starting to have success and starting to understand what I was doing and being able to help others. So, um, that's really cool. I'll tell you the, 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 that rehab. So well, you, in the beginning, you mentioned that you were, you stood me up on the last call and yeah. it's okay because I was looking on Facebook and Tyler was at this single mom's house, renovating the house that day. So I had no problem with where he was and what he was doing. Yeah. And I <laughs> gladly, I just, I was decided I'd give him a hard time about it, but it's look that, that stuff is 10 times more important than this. So that, that's amazing. So, okay. Really here's cool. what, here's what I really want to talk about. So I'm glad yeah. like it's, I think it's incredible to hear different people's stories. So, uh, you know, I was on a kind of military path. You're on a corporate path. We kind of came back and met in the same place with the same out outcome and, and things like that, which is really, 
it, it's, it's amazing. And that's, that's very similar stories throughout our group, right? They all just kind of weave in and it's about the, who we are and the kind of people that we are and the kind of core values that we all share, which is what this group is all about. So, um, success habits. So I want to talk about some of these things. We talked about some productivity and we're going to talk to some different people over the coming weeks about success habits and whether it's financial success, business success, life success, all of those things. So what are some things that you think that, that you do in your life that have made you successful? So a lot of people would sit here and go, oh my God, like this guy can flip a house in seven days. He's got, um, he's been able to pull himself out of the rat race and with three kids and all these, and three little kids, by the way, just like me, it's, we have a lot of things that you're doing. So what are those things that some of the things that you think have led to success? Yeah, the biggest thing for me is persistence, right? Like I read this book, it's called Acres of Diamonds or the same thing, three feet from gold, right? The principle is still the same. That I remember reading that a long time ago that, hey, if you just keep pushing and you keep doing these things, then eventually it's gonna happen, right? I used to listen to a lot of Zig Ziglar that he talks about the uh, Chinese bamboo tree, right? And how you water it for every year and you fertilize it and you, you nurture it for five years and nothing happens. And then finally in year, in year five, it grows 80 feet in six weeks. That to me was the grind, right? I was just constantly persistent. I wasn't ever going to give up because I knew that I would be the guy on the acres of diamonds, right? That, or the three feet from gold. And I knew that if I just kept pushing forward and I kept moving, that eventually it would happen, right? And it sucked. Trust me, there's been some painful times that I wanted to curl up in a ball and cry and give up and say, I can't do this anymore. But it's being persistent. I had that experience a month ago, right? Like my December sucked. It was terrible. We, we lost money and we did some things that we shouldn't have done and just a whole bunch of other stuff like that. But then we gave, we donated this rehab to this single mom. And then my, my, my whole focus totally changed. I'm like, how do we do that with 10 people, 10 single moms? Or how do we help more people in Dominican? Or how do we help, you know, I have to be successful in order to help people. And same with this, this community that we're a part of. There's a lot of people that are relying on me to be successful and I need to make sure that I, I don't let them down because if I'm successful, then I can help them be successful. So persistence is, is the first thing that comes to my mind is that, that I'm the type of guy that if I need money for a deal, I'll call 300 people before it, to find money, right? Because I'm just dedicated and persistent. So how do you, how do you find that persistence in the face of struggle. Like you said, you had a rough December. Like, how do you find that when you're beaten up, you're, you're feeling down, you lost money, all this stuff. Like, how do you, what, what, how? Yeah, it's hard. Like it really is hard. And you get in these, these moments that you're like, man, I'm not good enough. Or you have this imposter syndrome that people, you think, man, I shouldn't be a coach. You know, people should be coaching me. I'm, I'm terrible at this business. But it, for me, it's, it's those little wins that you have to look back on and say, you know what, I'm in a bad place in my business. I need to go help someone or I need to go do something that's going to make me feel fulfilled. And so I did that. I literally posted it on Facebook, a live Facebook post. I'm like, man, I'm so discouraged and I'm so disappointed. But look what I'm doing. I'm, I'm in front of this lady's house. We're going to go donate this rehab to her. That was a huge win to me. It was like incredible. I'm like, I'm so stupid. Like, why am I worrying about me? and my problems, and they're really not even that bad of problems, right? Like we can move on and we can grow on these things. So for me, it was just getting out of that mindset quickly that, that it's okay to fail. It's okay to, to not make a million dollars. Like that was my biggest thing. I, our goal was to hit a million dollars this year and we didn't do it. But guess what? Our next year is gonna be awesome. I met with my project manager and we said, hey, look, let's learn from this and now let's move forward and it's gonna be great. And I was at a whole new level today because I met with my team and we were doing good. And we said, hey, look at all these cool things we accomplished. And for me, that, that's what you have to focus on is that you have to get out of your own head. Because when you're in your head and you start listening to that voice that you're not good enough and you can't do it, then you start believing it, right? So for me, I have to get out of that and I have to say, you know what? Forget all of that. I, I can own this. I can totally do this. I understand how it works. So it's just shifting that mind, that mindset and saying, hey, all of these things that you're worried about and that you lose sleep over, they're, they're not really that big of deals. 
there, there's bigger things that I could do. And my business is still moving forward. We're still doing great things slowly, but surely. And that's okay. Yeah. I, I love that. You know, it's, it's some inner reflection. It's some thinking about, you know, what it's been like. It's about reaching out for support for me. A lot of times it's, Hey, you know, I, I've had a, I'm feeling down, you know, and it's hard to do sometimes. It's hard for me to do, to reach out. You're kind of these type A people that don't want to ask for help, right? They don't want to put out a, a, a flag, but they, you know, like you said, those five people, those average of the people that you spend the most time with is kind of like, you got to lean on them from time to time and get some perspective. But it's about comparing ourselves to who we were, not to who we think we should be. So right. when you look back at persistence, a lot of times it's, you're just kind of clawing up the mountain, but you're not seeing the results that you want just yet, right? You get, you start getting frustrated, but you got to look at those seeds that you planted and that time that you spent and look at how far you have come and the changes that you've made and kind of look back. I always talk about looking in the rear view mirror because as entrepreneurs and like driven people, type A people, we, we rarely do that. It's very hard for us to look in the rear view mirror. And now, um, we just had a meetup. We were in California for the EOS planning session and we had a meetup with some of the runway members. And I said to them, I said, you guys have come a lot further than you think in these past few months. And what happens is once we get, we do a deal, we do our first deal and it's huge, right? You did this first deal. It's like, whoa, even if you only made like say $2,000, yeah. $5,000, like monumental. And you're so excited. You're, you're, you're showing a picture of your check and, and all this stuff and you're posting it. You're so happy and everybody, you're t- talking to everybody about it. And then it becomes, you become numb to that because now you're doing a deal a month and then you're doing five deals a month. And then you get a wire for $80,000 for a deal that you did. And it's just a Tuesday because you're not thinking about how, how big of a thing that is and how incredible it was. But when you, when, if you go back and think about that guy who got that check for 2000 or $5,000 on their first deal, if they were looking at you now, they would go, $80,000, what? A wire? I don't even know how to get a wire. I had to get a check. I don't even have a bank account. You know, it's, oh, it's a business name? I didn't have a business name. So, there's a lot of, we've come a long way a lot of times and that persistence and that time that you spend and put into it. It's about being persistent even when things aren't going right. And that's the hardest part. And a lot of that is who are you spending time with? Who are you around? What's your support network look like? And are, are, you, are you comfortable reaching out and, and asking for help when you need it? So Stephen Covey has an awesome quote that says, um, I'm not a product of my circumstances. I'm a product of my decisions. So I'm not a product of my circumstances. I, I'm a product of my decisions. And that is, to me, that's my biggest thing is a lot of people put themselves in like you, like where you were in that uh, my circumstance at the time is the fact that we lost money and we, we did this and we did this. And then the result is what did you decide to do? You get up, you brush yourself off and you say, look, this is awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm in front of this lady's house and we're doing all these great things. And I was just in the Dominican Republic building houses. And, or do you say, well, yeah, but I did all that stuff, but we lost money. I'm a failure, all these things. Like, why was I doing that when I should have been focusing on something else? It's really the decision that you make and the next steps that will decide, are you going to persevere or not? Right? So it's okay to feel like that. It's okay to feel discouraged and it's okay to feel like you're not good enough, but it's what you do with that right? I've, I've had that feeling so many times that I am not Bill Allen. I cannot do three and a half million dollars. That's crazy to me. But the coolest part is I don't have to, I don't have to do that. What do I want? Right? Like how spending every day on Friday for me is the most important thing in the world. And maybe to you or to someone else that that doesn't matter, right? They'd rather work and get up at four in the morning and bust it and get done. But that was the best part for me is that, yeah, you have these feelings and you feel discouraged but it's what you do with them. Do you let them dwell and overcome you and, and you lose sleep on it? Or you say, you know what, screw those. I'm going to go and do my thing and win it because my fate is determined by me. Yeah. You know, the, the best part about uh, being Bill Allen and making three and a half million dollars, if you listen to my 2019 year <laughs> in review, you'll know that I didn't do that either. So, uh, yeah. you know, and we, we make goals and, sometimes they're too big and things happen and we fall short and it's not about beating ourselves up. It's about, like we said, making that decision. Don't sit in your circumstance, stand up, 
brush yourself off and figure out how you're going to fix it and go right. forward. So what else? What else? What are some uh, other things, some other keys to success that you've seen, whether that's in your life or in some of the 12 week year people. So you, you, you run, you're one of the uh, mentors of that group. You run one of those. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what are you seeing from those folks? Yeah, let me, that's, I love the 12 week year. I'm glad that you brought that up. So I started the 12 week year, I don't know, a year ago, probably. And Ariane was my first coach. And it was like this mini mastermind. I could vent and we could talk about it and we could do all these cool things. But now the 12 week year is so important to me. I was in the Dominican Republic in the middle of the jungle. And guess what? For two weeks, I found a way to find Wi-Fi, and it was choppy and terrible and whatever. But I found a way, and guess what? I was on that phone call because they're so important to me that I, I had to jump on that, that phone call and talk with these people and vent and just have them be around me and be su- supportive and be able to support them. So I was in the Dominican, and I was on this call. I was going to dinner on my birthday. My birthday is in December with my wife, and I said, "Hun." We're going to be a little late for dinner. It's my birthday. I have to jump on this call. I jumped on the call on my birthday on a date with my wife to get on the 12-week year call, right? And it's just so important to me that it's a priority. So my point in that is that most of the people who are winning in the 12-week year show up. Are they doing massive things all at once? They're taking this huge, massive action every week. They're like, man, I got 100% and I conquered the world. No, it's one little thing that moves the, their business every day. So that, that again, that persistence, but it's, it's showing up and it's doing something every single day that will help their business. So I have an amazing group and they're accomplishing some amazing things, that, but it's, it's being persistent. It's what they're doing. They're showing up all the time, but they're doing something every single day that they're going to look back and be like, holy cow, this, this Chinese bamboo tree took me five years to get there, but now look at it. Now it's 80 feet in six weeks. And it's gonna happen for these guys because they're diligent and they're showing up all the time. And their success is amazing. Like Garen Alexander is is finding deals from the MLS. He had a goal to do 30 um, offers every single week. I guarantee you doing 30 offers a week, he's gonna find deals. I promise that that will happen. He will get deals. It's not happening right now and it's going slow. But it's a numbers game and he's going to stick it and he's going to create this system that is going to be awesome that I'm going to want to copy and say, hey, dude, teach me how you did that. It was incredible. But it's all about those little tiny things that move your business forward. Yeah, and there's there's that accountability piece that's in there too, right? It's that if you've got it, you're showing up, you're somebody's, you you know that these things are going to get done if you've got four people waiting on you to get on your call, right? Absolutely. And if it, that's not the case, if you don't have to have that call or you don't have anybody holding you accountable, it's very easy to, um, to not, not do it or say, oh, there's always next week. And then you just start kind of falling off the horse, right? And it starts slowly slipping away from you. And that, that's the thing. It's the actions that, that produce the outcome, right? So it's not the outcome that you're looking for. You back it all the way up to the actions. And if you're taking those actions, so some people are action takers. I think one of the big, uh, the, my biggest success habit, one of the things that led me to success to where I am is the fact that I don't wait around for something, somebody to tell me to do something. I'm taking action and I'm starting, I'm, I'm taking action. It's, it's not, it's not the right thing. Most of the time it's imperfect action that's hopefully consistent, you know? So that consistent action is what it really takes in this business or any business, frankly, to get out there doing something that you're uncomfortable with. Instead, most people, they'll sit back and try to, you know, come up with some plans or, um, or what they think that they should be doing. And a lot of it is just busy work, not actually moving the needle. So actually sitting down and taking action. So, um, I think uh, Walt Disney said the way to get started is to quit uh, talking and begin doing the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing like, right. It's all about taking action. We talk about how much money we want to make and all the things we want to do. And you, you know, it's the same with the, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick. Right. That's like one of my best sayings is, is you just take action and do things instead of talking about it all the time and, or finding ways to feel busy. 
And I think that a lot of time that's what happens. And I know I jumped into a mastermind group the same time as a lot of other people. And you could see who was really going to be effective and efficient with the information that they were given because they're the ones that are taking it and doing something with it and not basically taking ownership too. You're going to take it and run with it or you're just going to kind of sit there and talk about it or like, oh, I also need this or what about this or spin your wheels. Joe Cordes is a um, uh, podcast with me. He was on one recently. He was right there in the first meeting with me and he's been slower out of the gate because he was constantly questioning what he should be doing and rethinking it and then asking again. And he shared some of those struggles on that podcast, really kind of not grabbing the bull by the horns and just saying, okay, if you're successful and I, and you're doing that, then I know I can be successful if I do that. Right. And that's it. It's about kind of taking the information that you think is going to be effective and then taking action on it and going out and do something. So quit talking about it and start doing it. Just like Walt Disney said, I think that is one of my favorite ones where uh, you just get out there and do it. So yeah, for sure. And, and just a couple things came to my mind that there's, there's a fail fast, right? It's okay to fail, but you can't let that fear overcome you. Walt Disney, I, I read, I just finished his autobiography and it was amazing. Right. But the, the amount of fear that he had, but his way, he, how he would overcome that, you know, fail fast. It's okay to fail, fail fast and learn from it. The second thing I thought of was to learn flat, learn fast and implement, right? The, the problem with these guys is that they come and they learn all this knowledge, but then they don't do anything and they don't implement it. Um, I just, I just made a post on, I needed an audio book and I said, Hey, give me the best audio books. And Bill, I think you told me, you're like, Hey, well, what do you need? And then implement that. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a novel idea. Why didn't I think of that? What do I need? And then how can I implement it slowly? So for now, what do I need? I'm going to learn that and then I'm going to implement it. And I'm going to do something else. And it, it, it's probably not going to be the right way the first time. That's okay. I just need to say, I need to learn and implement. And if it fails, then great. Now I learned something. It's just Thomas Edison, right? He had, did he have 99,000 or 999 failures, or did he have one success? And to me, that's, I'm okay with having the, the 900 failures before the one success, because I'm going to learn something and move me closer to where I want to be. So those were the two things that came is it's okay to fail, but you have to overcome that fear of failure that what's the worst that could really happen. Yeah. You could lose your house and whatever. So what, as long as I have my wife and my kids, I could live in a double wide trailer and still be happy. So we, we focus on the, the what could happen instead of the what really, really could happen. You know what I mean? Is that the, all these negative things, we got, we got to focus on what we could have. I could have stayed in my, my accounting job and I could have made good money and I could have made a good living, but I hated it and it's not what I wanted to do. So I, I said, what could be possible? I could run my own business and I could be my own boss and I could have fun Fridays that is what I want to do. And that's what I'm passionate about. And that's what I did. Have I failed along the way? You bet. I just recently failed in December. We lost $54,000. That's a failure, but I guarantee you it's not going to happen again because we failed fast. We're going to learn from it and we're going to implement. Yeah. It's that, fe it's that fear thing, right? You talk about fear and a lot of people let, you know, fear is the driver that's going to drive you. I think highly successful people don't let fear get in the way. They think about the, the outcomes and the, the risks and the rewards and sure. they weigh that and then they make a decision. And the, the big thing that I have is I, I think that successful people really make decisions. They don't bounce back and forth. They're decisive. Right. They really weigh the, weigh, weigh the benefits, weigh the risks, weigh all that stuff and then they make a decision. It's not round and around in a circle all the time. What should I do? That's it's the next thing you know, you're in procrastination, you're delayed, you're doing all those. You're, you can't really successful business owners, entrepreneurs, all that stuff. They are making dis, the decisions and they're making the decisions on time. I don't know if you can hear some crying, but that's my son, James, oh, getting yeah. home from school. So my kids are probably crying somewhere that's, too. Oh yeah. Someone's always crying in my house. We have like five <laughs> people in my house and someone's always crying and it's usually me. Right. So, yeah. We have, um, I, I think that that, like that decision-making is so important because they, everybody's going to look to you as the business owner, as the leader and things like that. You've got to be able to take that information from all the different channels, the people that are feeding it to you and make a decision. It's not always going to be right. I always say, you know, flying helicopters, I think gave me a lot of 
um, incredible skills to be able to run a business because I've got crew chiefs, I've got a crewman back, a, a search and rescue swimmer, I've got a co-pilot, I've got people talking on the radio, giving me all the information. And as aircraft commander, I have to make the decision. And you can't spend all day making a decision when you're, I don't know, dropping off seals and you're at 100 feet and you're coming into a, a LZ where people are shooting at you. Or if you're coming into the ship or you you got a big, um, uh, a bunch of people in the back of the helicopter that you're moving from ship to ship and the ship's not in the location. And if you go the wrong way, you're going to run out of gas and have to land this thing in the water. So there's a lot of th skills that are developed there, which is why I always think back to that time uh, in my training and my life to say, how does that help me make me a good business owner? I think it's decision-making and the speed at which we can make it and gather information. Absolutely. A good, uh, good mentor of mine, Thomas S. Monson said, decisions determine destiny. And man, that is powerful, that statement. Decisions truly do determine destiny. If you're making those decisions right or wrong, you're going to learn from them and you're going to overcome those, but they determine your destiny. Decision to quit my job was terrifying, but that was a decision that I knew I had to make and I made it with, I, I weighed all those, like what you were saying. I took the risk and the reward and I said, hey, what do I really want to do here? And I made that decision and I told my wife, I'm like, hey, this is it. We can live for six months. And if I fail, then there's, there's plan B but I'm going to make sure that I can make this decision and I'm going to act on it and I'm going to make it happen. And there is no plan B to me. It was always plan A. I was always going to do this. So decisions truly do determine destiny. I great point. Yeah. The, the other thing I think is that's really uh, another point about being successful for me is about kind of thinking through the plan and then executing on the plan. So like you, you done a, a seven day flip. So you're, that, that was all about planning and preparation and then starting to execute on it. Right. Absolutely. So like those, those of us who can really plan, and we talked about this with, with Nina on the podcast, but planning, planning ahead and thinking about what we're like me sitting down last night and mapping out my day today made me execute my day at the highest level I possibly could because I knew I didn't come into it because there's been days where I haven't planned at all. And I'll sit down and I'll go, oh, what should I be doing right now? What? I got a 30 minute window here. What could I do? Well, today I, I had written down tasks from after she, she, they're called quick tasks, right? Less than 10 minutes. And I have six of them for this week. And today I had blocked 30 minutes of time to execute quick tasks. And I just looked back to that list and I just checked them off. So I could get one done. I get another one done. Check two, I check two off in that 30 minute block that I have. Now I only have four left and there's going to be more that pop up throughout the week. They're going to be added to that list, but it directed me back there instead of me going, Oh, what should I be doing now? I don't know. Hmm. I've only got 28 minutes now. Uh, let me, I don't know. Let me, yeah, let me think about what else I'm doing or let me, let me look at this. And then, Oh, I only have 12 minutes. That's not enough time to actually get anything done. I'm just going to wait till my next appointment and you just waste 30 minutes. It's gone like that. And so you could, yeah, you know, I, I don't know who said it, but like plan to fail or f fail to plan. Those are your two options. Like just planning is going to really move the needle. I think Dale Carnegie said an hour of planning saves 10 hours of doing. So it's like you can really save a ton of time by planning instead of just going out there and running, running, running. We're on a hamster wheel. It takes time. And it, I, I want to make sure that this is, you don't think this is counter, um, counteractive to what we talked about with the decision making, but really like I talked about it, I think it might've been with Becca. We talked about when I'm planning for a mission, a, a flight mission for the military, there's times where we plan weeks ahead of time and then we would go execute a two hour flight and then we debrief on it for two, three, four hours. And so that's a ton of work put into two hours, but this is something that it needs to be executed to a T so nobody gets hurt, nothing happens, we're successful, all those things. And it really planning is so, so, so important to all of this. And I think that's, that's one of the other things that's very successful people do is they try to think through a couple of the different scenarios and plan ahead and why wouldn't this work? What's this? And that then they can take all that information and then make that decision and be, be effective at the decision making. Totally. Absolutely. And your point to the, the seven day flip we planned that flip longer than it took us to execute the flip. We had planned it. We always knew, I said, hey, we're going to do a seven-day flip, but we planned out everything, every contingency. What are we doing about lunch? And what are we doing about materials? And how are we going to get all these things? We spent a ton of time planning that. And we said, hey, in order for us to be successful, we have to be aware of everything that could happen. And so we did that. We planned it. 
perfectly and it went awesome. The, the planning part was the hardest part. The execution was easy. And same thing with what you're feeling now. The planning part is the, the hardest part. You got to sit down on a Sunday night and you got to plan out your week. That's the hardest part, but executing it. Now, you know, this is my plan. This is what we're going to do. Everybody's on the same page and it went awesome. We're going to do our goals for 2020 is would just blow you away on how fast we're going to flip some of these properties. And it's all, it's all based on the planning, right? Our planning is so important to us that, that we plan all these flips. We know what's every, everyone knows what their job is. Everyone knows where the materials are coming from, all of those things. But I'm the same way as you, Bill. I have a planner and every night I write down, actually in my flip packing live book is where I write down my, my H butts, right? My highest, best use of time is what I call them. So my H butts, what are the three things that are the highest and best use of my time that I have to get done? And then in the morning, I go to the gym and I do my perfect, my miracle morning or your perfect morning, whatever you want to call it. And then those are the three things that I focus on every single day. I say, I need to do these three things, whether it's take the garbage out or whether it's make 57 phone calls to a private money lenders or whatever that is, those three things are my highest priority, but I plan and I do that. I've done that for years and I know that a lot of other successful people are the same way. They have to plan out what's the most important use of their time and then they do it. I don't look at Facebook or I try not to do any of that other stuff before I get these done because they're, they're the things that are going to move my business the most and they're super important to me. So planning is, is super key, especially for us. We're flipping houses. Wholesaling is a little bit different because you guys kind of can control a lot more of that for flipping. That's all it is, is planning is we have to plan out the flips and how it's going to work and the ARVs and all these other things that just come along with that. So, but for me and setting goals and coming up with that plan and the 12 week year, going back to that as well, that's a hundred percent planning. It's planning to be successful. And that's, that's the difference in successful people versus not is that people who are successful write down their goals and they, they take action to achieve those goals by making a plan to do so. Yeah, I used, so I, I still do that. There's the three things, up to three things. It doesn't have to be three things, but it's those yeah, sure. things that I need to do that day to make sure that my day is success. And so those are the priorities. Those are the tasks that have to get done. And if they don't get done, nothing else should have gotten done. It's a lot of times what we do is we try to fit those like 15 minute tasks, the easy ones, you know, you got a list of things to do and you go, which one am I going to do? Hmm. Oh, let me get this one that I know is going to be easy to accomplish because then I, I feel my desk before I make that scary phone call. Right. <laughs> oh, you, I, I, I don't like talking on the phone. I, that's, that's me a hundred percent. If I don't build it in, it's not going to happen. So, and I'll find an excuse not to make it, but that's the thing because it, it'll give us a quick win. We think that we accomplished something. It's like making a business card, creating a website, doing all the things instead of sending out some car, some letters or some marketing or knocking on that door, or actually doing something that's going to move the business in the direction. It's getting the things accomplished, the busy work that you think that at the end of the day, oh yeah, I got a lot of stuff done, but nothing ever happened. No leads came in, no money came in, no deals closed, none of that stuff. You just, okay, we got a good looking business card now that's- desk is clean. Yeah, yeah but clean desk. I got a clean uh, desk, but I didn't I, make that phone call I should have. I do not have a clean desk right now. So. <laughs> um, the, that's good. That means you're focusing on the higher important things. Yeah. But sometimes we do that, right? I'm the same way. Sometimes I, I need that control and I say, hey, I need to clean my desk or I need to do something. I need to write a goal down that's already been done so I can check it off. I need that gratification. But sometimes you have to do those hard things and you have to do those rocks that you talk about a lot. You have to do um, what's Brian Tracy talks about, eat the frog. If you've got to eat the frog, the first thing you do in the morning is you've got to eat that frog. And I do the same thing. I, I eat the frog every day. These are the hardest things or these are the things that I have to do. I don't want to do them, but I need to get them done. And I don't want to eat that frog, but I, I do that the first thing. So my, my, my mentality is good. And then even like um, making the bed, right? We do that. That guy, that ship captain in the Navy talked about making your bed, why it's so important. Because you get a win. You get that, that, that emotion of winning and saying, yeah, I did this. I accomplished something. And that's good, but you need to eat the frog too. That guy was an admiral and he was a Navy SEAL. So you better watch out. Exactly. Look at that speech if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's awesome. Yeah. Make your bed. Yeah. 
Admiral McRaven, I think. So, uh, yeah, watch out for watch out for ship captain. He might uh, he might knock on your door. Uh, <laughs> not be too happy about that. So the so I've I've got one more. Do you have anything yeah. else that you want to share before I kind of close? Off the top of my head, I think that was perfect. So the 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 last one that I want to share for um, habits of successful people and successful business owners, success in anything, is to knowing to say no. Like people think that it's about saying yes to everything, yes to opportunities, yes to things, yes, 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 yes. And I think the most successful people are focused on saying no to things, no to opportunities and know which ones that they should be doing. It's like, what things should I be doing? So Tyler, you kind of uh, mentioned it a little bit, but it's that you talked about, so I'm, I'm just... I'm going to use an example. I saw you post on Facebook about the books that you're talking about reading. And you said, I want to read 50 books this year. Does anybody have great audible books? And initially I just kind of challenged you and I, I wrote some books and then I was like, well, what, what do you need right now? And you're like, I'm just looking for something, you know, I'm just looking for anything and I'm just going to read 50. And I have that, I've had that goal for the past couple of years. I've, I haven't hit it the past two years. And every year there was a guy that I know named Jeremy who posts his book reading list. And he usually reads 50 to 70. This year, I think he read like 76. And he, he, he writes a review about them. He's, he's always reading it. And that's great. And I, and I think it's great for, he's, he loves to read. So he posts, he posts these reviews. And it was awesome. So I saw that and I said, wow, I could probably read 50 books. I think that's probably what like a CEOs need to do. And so I'm going to try to do that. I think I read 37 books two years ago. And I think this year I read somewhere around the same. But what I realized in that journey was, and now I kind of was kind of promoting that. So at the end of last year, I, I posted, hey, I read these 37 books. Here's what I read. These were the good ones. These were the bad ones. Did anybody have any books that you read that you love that I should put on my list for next year? And I was creating a list at the end of the year. And then this year, I was like, oh, I got to get my book list out. And I was like, what? A, okay. I know, I know what books I read. I know that I read them. I've got like 30 some, 37, 40 books, whatever it was. Now I'm going to take like two hours. I'm going to put it all together. I'm going to get it on the spreadsheet because I, I, I didn't do that over the year. I failed to keep up with it. I just read them and did things. And, and, and I have a system for my books, uh, the way I, that I do it. And I'll, I'll share it here in a minute. But I'm going to take two hours out of my day to put that together and put it up on Facebook so other people can, can see it and get it. And, and then I'll motivate other people just to read books, just to read books. No, instead, what I want to do is my plan is I'm going to post a, I'm going to make a post on Facebook that says, I read this many books this year. Here's what I realized after two years of posting. I, I don't want to motivate you just to read books. I want to motivate people to read the right book for what they need right now. So if they see that I'm reading books, but they're not in the same place that I am, you shouldn't be reading any of the books that I'm reading. Right. You should not read a single one of the books that are on my list. You should read a book that is on my list three years ago or four years ago or five years ago, or that one thing that you need right now. Like, what do you need right now? What's the one thing that's going to put money in your bank and move the needle for you right now? You need to learn how to do that. And you need to do that. If it's your specialty, you need to do it. If it's not, you need to find somebody else that can help you do that. And so what I was challenging you on that, it was don't just put a, something out there because you want to do it. Like, what I've realized is, we've got to know where we are and what season we're in and what kind of books we need and then ask for that. Like be specific about what you need and what you want and say no to the rest, say no to the noise, say no to the competition, say no to 50 books, just read 50 books. It's like another notch on my belt. I read 50 books. It's a feather in my hat. Congratulations. You read 50 books. What is that doing? So really reading the things that you need, the right things, you're getting what you need right now. Like there's something that you need right now. So that's what I was trying to get at. And I continue, I continued to get you on that post. Like you, you responded there and I was like, I'm not letting him go with just that easy. <laughs> right. It's like, no, you don't understand. You don't need to do that. And maybe you do, maybe you're at a point where you're bored. Life is great. I just want to read, man. But when we're at this point and then, so what, when my books, my books went from the tactical in reading uh, about flipping houses. I got the Home Depot one, two, three, like how to fix up a house. I got, I got all of these different books on the, the, tech, the technician type stuff. Like how do I do all this stuff? And that's even my mindset was so screwed up that I was trying to learn how to do everything myself at that time. And it's the journey that I needed to take. But then, then I started reading books about growing a business. Then I started reading books about leadership and 
and management. And now I, then I started reading books about other successful entrepreneurs and, and business owners and bi- biographies and CEOs and things like that. And now I look for that one book that hopefully I get something that I can share with other people now. Like what is that thing that, that I read that can help our mastermind members that I can put together a presentation around or I can design something or can change the way that I think or my mindset or something new that I need to do right now in a new business or a new idea or my family, like reading about raising kids or where I'm spending my time and what I'm doing or about how to get through Disney World as most efficiently as possible (laughs) for October so I can study to make sure that we have the best experience that we can. So stuff like that. You know, that's where my world is now. And I challenge all of you guys to say no to as many opportunities as possible and only say yes to the things that you need right now. Opportunity presents itself in very different ways over time. And the opportunity that wasn't so good two years ago could be good now. And the opportunity that's really good right now might not, you might not need it for a couple years. So saying no, like, I think that's one of the hardest things that we do, but the most successful people, the habits that successful people get, get into is saying no. I am right now on my whiteboard. I just started it today. It's called a stop doing list. It's not a to-do list. It's a stop doing list. And the first thing on there is check my email. And so I am training myself right now. I have checked my email twice today. I usually check my email like hundreds and hundreds of times a day. And when my assistant came in here this morning, I said to her, you need to help me with my stop doing list because I have this to-do list and it's never ending. And I check my email nonstop. Boom, boom, boom. You are responsible for my email. You always have been. You need to help me. If there's something that's an emergency, you need to get to me and you need to text me. You need to call me. You need to figure out how to do it. And if it's something that has to be answered, but there's nothing that has to be answered. There's no emergencies. And because I want to get to a point where I only, I turn my phone off at night. And if there's an emergency, my assistant knows that she's going to have to get in her car, drive to my house and knock on the door to get my attention. So it better be an emergency if she's leaving her house at 8 PM to drive over to my house, you know? So that's my, that's my annual goal, by the way. And I just wrote it in the book today. So these are the things that I think we have to be good at and really, really successful people are good at that. So I was never really that good at that. I would say yes in the beginning, but I was saying yes a lot and that's okay. Because in the beginning, when you don't know what you're doing, you need to say yes to those lunches. You need to say yes to those coffees. You need to say yes to those uh, meetups. You need to say yes to all that stuff. As you become more and more successful and start understanding what's going on, you need to understand that you can't, you have to say no to be able to grow. Right. So. I agree with you, 100%. I just had one more point too, that what you said um, kind of sparked an interest that successful people, I feel like are really good with people and people is your business. So a lot of people think, Oh, what, what do you do for a living? Oh, I flip houses. That's not really my business. What I do is I, I'm, I help people and I'm with people and I make connections with people, whether it be your sellers or your buyers or your mentors or people that you're mentoring, all of that is, is the people business. So the, just the one last thought that I had was that you're really in this to help to be with people and how good you are with people totally determines your success. And so if you're good with asking questions and getting into groups and, and, and bringing these people into your life, then it's going to, we talked a little bit about that, that my circle of five are people who I want to be like, who I aspire to be. And it's because I have those really good relationships with these people and my project manager. And I look at my employees and my crew and all of that is, is that you have to be really good with people. So how do you win friends and influence people? totally determines on your success as well. And, and you've been a great uh, poster child of that, that you're really good with people and you help people and you bring people up. And that's just super important to me. So that, that was another last minute point of success that I feel like is important to me is, is how you treat people and how people perceive you and how, um, what you're willing to give and to help and, and all of that. So uh, again, I kind of go on a tangent, but I totally agree with what you were saying. And I think that this is awesome. Well, the, the problem with this podcast and successful habits is we could just ping pong back and forth yeah, all totally. night because I mean, <laughs> you, you mentioned Zig and you're talking about people and you know, it, it, it's all about helping other people get what they want. You know, right. that's, I it's totally it's straight from his book is the, the, his quotes. It's just, if you help other people, that's it. That's the end of it. Like you will get what you want if you help enough other people get what they want. 
And that is, that's it. That's the name of the game. Yep. It's amazing. That is exactly right. That's it. And um, I, I, don't, I don't even know how, like that is the, that is the path to success. Right. If, if you're selfish, if it's all about you, if all of those things, it's, you, that's, that's, where, that's where you lose. You, you can win for a short period of time, but you can't win for a long period of time when you're like that. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, and I, I realized that we run a mastermind group and we have a seven figure runway, seven figure altitude. We have the podcast for packing live, all of these things. But I think that the most successful people that I know and that I've seen, and obviously we, you, you run a, uh, accountability group are people that know that they need to invest in themselves, right? They need to invest in their personal development, their professional development, everything you've got to understand that if you want to grow past where you are, you've got to be able to invest in yourself. And that can mean anything from buying a book, re going to the library, reading, taking the time. It's not just about money. It's not about joining a mastermind group and investing money in yourself and your education. As, as much as I would love for all of you to do that. And you know, I, I know a really good one, but it's about, you know, you mean investing the time and the energy and like, I, I don't discount the fact that when we put on Flip Hacking Live, it's a three-day event. I don't, you have to get in an airplane. You have to fly to the venue. You have to book a hotel room for four nights, typically. You have to spend three full days with us away from your business, away from your family, all that stuff. There's travel on the front end, travel on the back end, and then fly home. Be basically five days away from your family. But you're making that investment in yourself and your future, and that will pay off in dividends 10, 20, 100 times over. I mean, I can't even do the math on what that initial $25,000 investment into seven-figure flipping has done for me in my life. And I mean, Same. We, I can look at my net worth sheet. I can look at my family. I can look at the amount of time that I get to spend at home. I get to look at the choices that I make and everything. And it was all because of that decision. When I was the cheapest person in the world, I had a library card then. I wouldn't even buy a book. <laughs> Go rent it. Yeah. Yeah. I would, and I, by the way, I still have a library card. I could, you could get Audible on your, from your library card onto your phone, just like any other book that you bought, by the way. So if you want to save like 15, 20 bucks, check it out. Um, so there's, it's investing in yourself is so important. It is so important. And if you want to be successful, if you want to hit the, these kind of numbers, if you want to soar with the eagles, not hang out with the turkeys, is that what you said? Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> You've got, you've, you've got to put, invest time, invest money, invest things in yourself. I mean, we just spent three days in uh, California. We, you want to talk about investing time and money? We invest, we, we invested the seven figure flipping uh, company. So my staff on, in this company, we flew out on new year's day. The seven of us on new year's day, we left our families. We went left on new year's day and we put in three full days with an EOS coach. So Dan Coleman, he was on the podcast. And we built out our plan for all of you guys. What are we going to do this year? What kind of podcasts are we going to do? What, what are our 90 day goals, our one year goal, three year picture and our seven year plan. And what does that look like? Like how can we best serve everyone in our community from the podcast to the events, to the mastermind groups, to the, to the team, to my staff, how can we become better than we've ever been than we ever thought that we could? Well, we got to put in the time. We got to invest the money. We've got to, I mean, it's not cheap to fly seven people out to California, put them up, have meetups, do all that stuff and, and pay an EOS implementer to do it. All of these things are us putting money and investing in ourselves. And I think that's really, really important when you want to hit a certain level and you want to grow and you want to actually build a business, a real business, not just right. another job. Like I was trying, I mean, I created another job. I was flipping one house a year, creating another job from the beginning of this podcast to now same thing. I was on the wheel. Like I had some of these success habits. I mean, I was successful in my aviation career, in the military, all these things. When I got into entrepreneurship, I realized there's some other things that I need to be able to do and some other skills that I need to acquire. And what better way than just go out there and, and get them from somebody else or be motivated and speed it up. So From decades into days, right? That's Tony Robbins is big on that. You took Andy's, Andy's been in the business for 15 years, something like that. You took his decades and turned it into days, right? And, and it still took you five years to, to catch Andy or whatever it took, right? But you learned from him and you said, hey, this is what I want to do. Let me learn from your trials and errors and, and grow. So people to that point as well, you had the right people that flew out to California with you. That's, that's a, 
awesome that you have those right people, but that you also invested in yourself as well. There's no way I could run my business without seven figure flipping. Like we both talked about that in our intros, right? In our backstory, that it was truly life changing because we made that decision to invest in ourselves. I was a team of one. You were a team of one, right? We didn't have these other people, but we had to invest in ourselves so we could help other people. I 100% agree with you that that self personal development is so important, whether it's going to seminars or reading books or listening to audible or podcasts. What a great way to have that personal development, but I do the same thing. I still do it. I know you do it. I know people who are in this, that our mastermind group that are doing stuff at high level are doing all of those things consecutively and consistently. Yep. So guys, if you take all of these, you push, put them into one that you will be successful. There, it's, it's impossible not to be successful if you are persistent, you take action, you invest in yourself, you say no to the, right, to, to the opportunities that aren't going to move the needle for you. You focus, you, you look at that one thing that needs to be accomplished. You have accountability built into what you do, whether it's the people that you're around or you're holding yourself accountable or somebody's holding you accountable. And I recommend it's somebody other than yourself. If you do all of these things and everything that we just talked about on this podcast, you will be successful in whatever you do. I mean, it doesn't even have to be just be flipping houses, wholesaling houses, in raising your kids and in your, you know, going out and getting married, looking for someone like how you carry yourself in life spiritually, your relationship with God, whatever it may be, you will be successful. So look, take this stuff. And if you're going to take any advice, you're going to listen to this podcast, you have two options now. You can say, oh, that's great. And just go on and continue to do the things that you're doing right now. Or you could take one piece of advice from this, which is take action on all of these things that are in this podcast and go be successful. So you choose if you want to, you know, I don't know, turn it off, go continue to watch uh, Netflix and go on with your life. That's fine. Or the other option is actually take action, become better at these things. These are learnable skills. These are habits. Habits are not automatic. Habits need to happen over and over and over again before they become habits. These are things that you do over and over and over until it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, then you don't even think about it. You do it without thinking. Have you ever gotten in your car and driven to the wrong place because you drove home, but you were supposed to go somewhere else or you took the wrong exit? It's because you're on autopilot because you are in a habit where you're thinking about other things and you just, you're, you're like a robot. When you, when you ha are habitually doing things, you do them without even thinking about it. When I fly a helicopter right now, I don't think about what I do. I just do it. And if you got in there, you wouldn't be able to hold still. You'd be crashing in five seconds. <laughs> so you got, you got the options. My recommendation is take some action on some of these things, become better and be intentional about it. Like really focus on, on building successful habits and taking this whole series, this whole month, whether it's financial, personal, lots of different things like the habit of the successful people and figure out what it is and look at your weaknesses. Like where are those areas in your life that whether it's, it's planning, like we talked about with the, with the planner, with Nina and your productivity, whether it's some of these success habits, whether it's, you know, financial success habits and you need to get your finance, financial house in order. We'll dig into details on that on this series. Lots of different things and your business health too. We talk, we'll talk about business health. So that's awesome. Little man in the background. What's up, dude? What's your name? This is Dawson. Dawson. Awesome. Yeah. So we're getting close to the end of the day. We've got like little rugrats coming in. So, cool. all right, let's wrap it up. So, Hey, Tyler, again, I mean, I know that you've done a couple of these with me and you're doing a lot of work inside the, the group and I'm incredibly thankful for everything that you're doing. It's amazing. Um, I can't believe that you're on the uh, calls in the Dominican Republic and on your birthday and on dates and things like that. You might need to start saying no to some of these things and take yeah, some of my advice. Take, I wrote that down. I'm going to take that point and say, yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. I need to say no to a few things. <laughs> That's it. So, uh, look, I, I love spending time with you every time. It's so much fun. We're constantly, I'm uh, constantly learning more about you and getting to know you better. And uh, it's, it's really, really awesome. So I can't wait to see you in like three weeks on the cruise where we're going to be talking about a lot of this stuff. I think some of the presentations that I'm putting together are uh, on financial success habits, are on success habits, and a lot of the mindset around the things that we're struggling with or we think that we're struggling with and why. So I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome. It is. Um, all right. So, hey, 
Uh, we talked about the mastermind group a lot on this one. If that's something you guys are interested in, the seven figure runway, we closed the doors on that. We don't open it until Flip Hacking Live. So if you're interested in that, you can still go to sevenfigureflipping.com. You can check it out. If you're a newer investor, you can uh, put in an application for it, join the waiting list, stuff like that. Um, you can also look at Flip Hacking Live uh, from that site or go to fliphackinglive.com. But primarily, if you're do, doing high level and you're doing the size business that uh, Tyler and I have, you're doing, you know, 10 deals a year, 20 deals a year, and you're kind of hitting that ceiling. You've hit a limit and you want to grow past it. Maybe it's just you, maybe it's you and one other person and you don't have any systems in place or anything like that. And you just can't see what the next step is. And some of this stuff that we're talking about is resonating with you and who we are and the kind of people that we are. We'd love to talk with you and see if you're a fit for the mastermind group. Just go to sevenfigureflipping.com. You can click on the seven figure altitude link and read more about it. But we do have some limits there. Those We have some geographical limitations to that. And we also have some uh, limits on the size of your business. So we want to make sure that it's the right fit for you. We don't want to put the people in there who aren't ready for it because uh, it's, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're not doing a certain volume. And so when your, your area, your geographical area might be full. So if it's full, then you just talk to Dave, our enrollment director. And worst case, he just says, Hey, we're full. We'll, we'll put you on the waiting list and, uh, you can get some information. Obviously it's a no pressure conversation. We want to hear more about you, get to know you a little bit. And right now you're listening to the podcast. This stuff's free. All the stuff on our website is free. And if we can ever help you out, um, just go to sevenfigureflipping.com and you can, send us an email and, and we'll help you out. We also have a Facebook group called uh, Seven Figure Flipping and Wholesaling. So you can jump in there. It's, that's a free Facebook group. You just have to answer a couple of questions. We'll let you in and uh, we can answer some of your questions in there too. So thanks a lot for spending time with us, Tyler. As always, love spending time with you. And um, Can't wait thanks, to see you again, bro. thanks for being open and honest. I'm sorry that I was late and uh, hopefully I didn't beat you up too bad on the reading the 50 books thing. I actually hope that you read five books and you implement the one thing from each of them that changes your business to hit over a million dollars. Love it. And maybe it'll take 10, maybe it'll take four, maybe it'll take, oh, before we go, one more thing. I didn't tell you what my system is. So real quick, my books, I get the book on Audible and I listen to it. And then if I love it, then I buy it on the hard copy and I put it up on my shelf and I usually buy two and I give one to somebody else and I keep one. So that's my system. And then, then next time I, what I'll do is I'll read it and I go through and highlight and pull out the things and, and stuff like that. So there's only a couple books on my shelf. So that way I know when somebody really asks for books, I just look over to my shelf and I give them those ones because that's kind of like my VIP list of books. So that's my system. I said I would share it and then I didn't, I do that a lot on here. I forget. So, all right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Go to sevenfigureflipping.com and check us out, the groups, the events, all that stuff. I can't wait. We're having a cruise coming up February 2nd through 9th. So if you jump in fast enough, you might even be able to get a spot on the cruise. See ya. Be sweet. All right, bye. Thanks for listening to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast with Bill Allen. If you want to grow and scale your house flipping or wholesaling business, check out more insider tips and strategies from the nation's most successful real estate investors at sevenfigureflipping.com.